so since we're in the house and since we're, you know, just having this, this moment by moment, uh, day to day type of scenario right now, which really that should be the way we're all living every day. You know, I found that listening to music really gives me a sense of hope and a sense of peace and a sense of joy. And so yesterday I was listening to this song and it was literally on my heart all day, just making me smile. Uh, I kept it in my prayers and meditations and thoughts and I wanted to share it with you and here it is. That's the way you do. Snow shadow, you won't light up. Mountain, you won't climb up. Coming after me. There's no wall, you won't kick down. Lie, you won't tear down. Coming after me. There's no shadow, he won't light up. Mountain, he won't climb up. Coming after you. That's how much he loves you. There's no wall he won't kick down. Lie he won't tear down. Coming after you. Tell me, there's no shadow. No shadow he won't lie. Coming after me. That's how much you love me. There's no wall. No wall he won't kick down. No lie he won't tear down. Coming after me. There's no shadow. No shadow. just brought me so much joy and since we're talking about music and how music can change lives I am so excited to be on today with a special guest Josiah Bruni hi Josiah hey how are you I'm good thank you so much for having me on this morning you know, can you tell uh, all of the people that are watching who you are and what you do? So my name is Josiah Bruni. Um, I'm the CEO and founder of Music Changing Lives. It's an organization that I created 22 years ago with the premise of just teaching artists how to own their intellectual properties at first. And um, I worked in the music industry up under my older brother, Juan G. And we were the top uh, street team in California, period, if not the world. Um, and we took his album to number one. And then one day I woke up and said, I have to teach kids in the inner cities how to do what we're doing, um, how to make money legitimately, how to own their intellectual properties 100% and be able to go at it and then uh, sell their music and sell their rights from there. And now it's this robust after school program uh, that teaches kids music, art, dance, uh, violin, uh, drums, silk screening, um, film creation. I mean, it's, it's so much, but, and even special engaging now. We did that uh, talk with you where we went out and did the Let's Talk About It, uh, where we get kids to talk about five issues that's going on in their communities, five ways they themselves can change those issues and then nail it down to one issue they themselves really want to change within themselves and their community. And so that's what we're doing now. 
So, you know, that's amazing because that's teaching really how to campaign, right? Um, and teaching self-advocacy um, agency, how, what does that look like? And you're teaching children that um, through music and art um, and also business practices. And so it, it, how have you found that that has helped to improve like mental stability or behaviors even? Wow, that's a great question, right? I take it back to what you said earlier, expanding the learning curve. Um, I, you always have these taglines that I love. And then the other one that you had was, um, don't put me in a box, yeah. right? So that's exactly what we do. We don't put a child in a box. I realize that I'm dealing with a child that may have multiple intelligences. And so their attention span is 10 to 20 seconds. Um, sometimes even shorter. As you see, uh, TikTok, that's why it's so fam uh, famous to them, to the kids, because you could do something real quick and then bounce to the next and get something that's funnier within 15 seconds to even three seconds. And so that's what we do. We sit down with a kid and we say, where do you want to go? You know, uh, it's not a cookie cutter program. This is something where we actually dig down deep and find out what the kid wants to create and then help them create that pathway. And so it's nothing like it. I haven't found around the world yet um, to where, like I said, we deal with multiple intelligences and teach them how to own it and then go out and sell it. And so I appreciate that you said you deal with multiple intelligences and that the attention spans are very short and you find a way to capture their attention and really work with them through that. Um, because what I call that is support supporting various modalities of learning, right? Which since we're all at home right now, that is exactly where we're at. And some people would call that multiple intelligence um, and short attention span ADHD, right? I mean, <laughs> you know, so, you know, exactly. you put a formal diagnosis on something, but really it's about learning what the, makes the child thrive, right? Mm -hmm. And so that requires those personal and, and interpersonal relationships and building that relationship capacity. And us as parents right now have the greatest opportunity because we know our kids best. We know what helps them thrive. We know what triggers them. And so we could really work on modifying different things throughout the day according to how they learn best. And so do you have, what would you say about that and integrating music into that in art? That, that's a great question, right? And um, I take it back as to teaching them, like you said, uh, the different mobilities of themselves, right? So figuring out what your kid really loves, watching them and like just listening to them. Because if you notice a kid learns to really dance before they even learn to walk or they learn to sing and make noises before they even learn to talk, right? And so if you just really pay attention to what's coming out of your child's mouth and really listen to them, you'll find out some of them are bringing you jewels. Um, it's like in a word, right? They said the wise are, are the young will be the wise ones with new ideas. And then the elders should be able to be able to like to be like a, a beacon of light uh, to kind of guide us so we don't get in those pitfalls. And so that's what I love to do. And I encourage other parents to do as well. Really listen to your children. Um, I shout out to one of my homegirls I'm thinking about right now, Roshana. Her daughter has this project called Royal Soaps. And um, she lost her father to uh, gun violence, right? Oh. And, and to cure that, they created a soap that they now sell and then buy teddy bears with it to give to other kids. And this Wonderful. is something that a child created. And so you just listen to a child and, you know, they could create those type memories. Um, thinking of my young guy, Pedro, uh, his mom brought him to me three years ago. He only played the trumpet. But being that we have so many different programs you can test, he now knows how to DJ. He also went out and found a person that could teach him how to play the harp. And then even to create something bigger, he now teaches kids how to play mariachi. <laughs> and so wow, that's this nine-year-old kid, right, that just came to you playing trumpet and could sing into a show, entered into a showcase and is now teaching other kids how to do what he's doing and on higher levels. 
And so, you know, I, I love that again, you know, what you said about the youth are young, right? We cannot count them out. As a matter of fact, we count them in because exactly. they come up with so many great ideas um, and listening, like you said, listening to what your child is saying. Like my daughter, she's been able to be uh, an, an amazing artist since she could even pick up a pencil and do something with it, right? Mm -hmm. And I noticed this gift in her very young, very young. You know, she was probably two, and I would see her, her art in crayon, the creation, and I was like, she's an artist, and I don't have that gift, I'll tell you that, uh, because I draw like thick figures and, uh, you know, with the circle and the triangle for the body, you know, and, <laughs> I saw her art, and then I was recognizing that same gift in my son, and I was like, wow, I am going to let them, uh, you know, just explore their talents and their gifts, and I buy them things that support that, you know, so she wanted to work on some abstract art, and I allowed her to just watch what other artists, you know, adult artists, of course, are that are kind of artists and, and guru, gurus in it. Um, we're doing with abstract pieces all over the world. And that inspired her to be able to create something on a piece of wood. She's like, I'm going to take this piece of wood and I'm going to create abstract art. And so every child learns differently and has a different skill set, different, different talents, different abilities, modalities of learning. And we're talking about supporting that. Um, I would definitely like if you could talk on how we can utilize music and art as a way to integrate cultural learning and cultural experiences. Mm, that, that's a good question. I love it. Um, so the first way I would think is just really coming at the youth and making it youth led. If you're looking at uh, that, don't treat them as if it's something that's just cute or like, oh, this is cute. Watch them sing, we are the world or something like that, right? Or, they say we are the world. <laughs> right, I mean, let's, let's get real. Like, I mean, that's a great right. song and I'm not right. dissing it or anything like that because we want to do those concepts. But it's now take these kids serious and have them create a song that's like, we are the world. So for one example, we had a girl, Sean Jones. I could have easily had the this girl mimic another song, but she created, listen, had her own song called Sticks and Stones. And so we sat down, we listened to the song, we brought real orchestras around her, a real agency to produce some music like uh, they did We Are the World for Michael Jackson, no lie. And the song is about to take over the world for bullying, right? Um, it's going to become an anthem now for youth humanitarian um, awards and things like that as well. Um, so when you really take these kids serious, and like I said, the first thing is really listening to them. Let them create the culture that they want to create, right? That's how I work. Um, we come into this, and like I said, you find the five top things the kids want to do, and then what's the number one thing you really, really, really want to accomplish, and let's do that. And once you become successful at that, then everything opens up to other ideas. Um, so it's like what you're doing with the students. I really loved it. And gathering the, together to talk and to, to see their differences. And then once they talk out their differences, okay, what's next? And then keep giving them those roadmaps to say, here's how we create real change. Here's how you really change policy in your community. Here's how you go into a, a city building and start your own business. Here's how you become financially wealthy. You know, give them those five major essentials that every human being needs. Shelter, love, uh, you know, recreation, uh, wealth, and, and, you know, obviously just knowing self so that you could be, you know, independent because that's the biggest thing in this world, right? That's that American dream to say what happened to the real American dream where everyone came here looking for a better life, you know? Um, there was ancestors that were already here living that life, but everyone came here looking for a better life in some Some way. of us didn't, but yeah. we're going to talk about that. Hey, that's that. Not, hey, you heard me? <laughs> I said some of the ancestors were here, you know, the indigenous right. folks were right. living that life. And right. others, you know, came and was looking for that life. And so now it's like, let's be real. Let's be genuine. That's it. The only thing that separates mankind right now is poverty. 
if you really think yeah. about it. You know what I mean? And if you in those, you, our work ethic is no less. Our work ethic is actually higher. Our determination is higher. And so if you're really talking about going at it culturally and making it youth led, you gotta give the kids the voice, give them the true tools. Let's stop make it's what we call fast track. We just created a thing called fast track biz. So if you come to me and you want to know how to start a business, we're going to show you how to do this instantaneously. You're not going to have to take 22 years to get to where I'm at. I want to see you go from where you're at. From I give them 365 days, each person I deal with. I say, if you come in contact with me and do what I actually say do, and we advise you to do with our advisors that's on our team, I guarantee you in 365 days, if your life ain't changed, you can say Josiah Bruni is full of crap. <laughs> and you know, haven't had that yet. I like how, you know, you're talking about poverty as um, trying to break through that cyclical generational um, oppression, right? Because that has a way of disabling people. Um, the economic gap, right? And just the disparities. Um, there are people that I know today uh, that are adults that have PTSD because of exactly that right now. And so, you know, I was so thrilled to, to be able to meet you and invite you out to, you know, my youth initiatives that I was doing before COVID. I miss you guys. We might do. And that was a part of what it was that we were doing um, at the one forum that you were at, which I would host three times a year at different locations. Um, but just trying to empower the youth towards generational progress and lasting change, right? Hmm. That is very important. And being able to understand the way that each child learns and has these experiences um, and listening to those experiences and just trying to understand, allowing them to have these dialogues and discussions, um, even if they do it through music, even if they do it through poetry, even if they do it through writing, still embracing that because that is their form of intellect and they're sharing it with you. Um, and so, you know, that's amazing that you are working with these youth and building them up for lasting change for the rest of their life. Um, can you tell us how you have been able to manage through what some people would call behavior problem children? Oh yeah. So that's a real good question. I actually go after those kids. Um, the blessed part about me is I was one of those students. I was a statistic. So to be just humbly honest, I was expelled from all of LA County. Um, I think it was in middle school. Um, it was like sixth grade. And, and um, so think about that. My mom was just now getting her job in the LA courthouse <laughs> and your baby has now be, been expelled from the whole county. And so the only other option was, I believe, like Orange County, some other counties around surrounding LA County, but we couldn't afford. And so the Inland Empire became home uh, for us. Uh, and I had to transition. And so being one of those kids that actually was a problem child, but then also trying to find himself in a place where they weren't really weren't trying to help me find myself. Um, and, and trying to find my identity and find fortune at the same time, it was a, it was a difficult uh, road. And so after a while, once I found mentors to teach me how to make, like I said in the beginning, legal money and give me positive peer pressure instead of negative peer pressure, everything changed for me. And so it was that light bulb that clicked and shout out to my older brother, Double M. I remember to this day, he uh, picked me up one day and he was like, look, man, no more doing wrong, no more stealing. You know, I'm going to show you how to make real money. And ever since then, it's just been a whole different experience for me as a human being. 
And so after that, I vowed to myself to go back into our communities and teach individuals how to make that same legal money. Because there's, if you go into any ghetto, it's the same scenario, whether you're in a different state or whatever, it's everyone's trying to find one, their identity, two, that fortune. And so now I call them truth seekers, right? Instead of like problem children, they really just seeking the truth. They really want to know how do I go into a bank, get a, a, a bank loan uh, in my scenario, you know, and be real with me. Don't, don't hype me. Don't fluff me. And so that's what we do now at Fast Track Biz and also in the Changing Life Showcase is we teach an individual how to find themselves. And once you find identity and find what you love doing, now you can, you know, button it up and feel good, right? right. And then after you feel good about yourself, it's like, okay, don't get too big headed because you got a long road to go, right. you know what I'm saying? But, but let me show you how to keep fluffing it up. And then those that really, like I said, listen and follow the mantras of determination and willpower to really change the curve, and of like you said early expanding that learning curve within self because it's not easy right uh but once you take control of self you are now the controller of your destiny and so once we can teach an individual how to control their own destiny imagine what the world could be you know and so i always talk about developing our child our children around something that they really enjoy doing and allowing them to master that, right? Mm -hmm. Allowing them to thrive in that. Like not pointing out the stuff that they may be failing or weak in, um, which, you know, of course we wanna help them to be well-rounded and develop in those areas too, but I will allow my children to master whatever I see as their really strong gift, because that's what they're gonna be able to take with them for the rest of their life and utilize it, right? And so when we think about in the old days, if people wanna call it that, um, what, was, what were people mastering? Like even seamstress, uh, music, arts, uh, vocations were a, a skill set that people mastered and now can become entrepreneurs and adulthood because they have a skill that people need, right? And so I think that every child at every level, if we're able to help them to thrive in an area where they're, they're very strong at and also develop them in some of the areas that they're weak in, then exactly what you're talking about can be done. And, you know, I am like you and I applaud you because we weren't waiting for solutions. We were just like, we're just going to go and do it. We're going to go do it. And, you know, that's how we ended up meeting up. <laughs> so we we're both in the community uh, doing things with the children. And, I, and I'm always quick to say, don't box our kids in. Do not. Because none of them want to be uh, considered a statistic. They don't want to be another number. We've heard them say this over and over and over. And so that's why I had started the don't box me in forum, right? Don't box me in. Because they want you to see them as individuals. And so, you know, talk a little bit about that, about the individualistic uh, thing. Oh, yeah. So, so now, um, thanks to my partners at U of R, it's gone a little deeper. So like I said in the beginning, we also, we find out what a kid wants to do through the empowerment of policy with the five issues and then nail it down to the one. But now we make the kids write a contract. Um, so you have to tell us in this year, what do you actually want to accomplish? So 360 days from now, what are going to be your goals? And then they write it down and then we put it in a um, survey. And then we also have them write themselves a letter. And then we take that letter and then we send it to them on the date that it's supposed to be mailed out a year later. Um, and so that when they receive it, they can now look at these letters and look at the survey and see if they've accomplished these dreams. I call it the law of attraction, uh, or not I call it, but it's a part of the law of attraction. Um, it's a piece of that. And mastering the universe around you. It's learning how to just write it, 
say it, speak it, believe it, but then go and just work on it. A lot of our people weren't taught that. They were taught, you know, go out, work hard, go out, get a good education, but then forget about, you know, what you really want. It's like, you always start thinking, well, I got to pay Edison. I got to pay gas. I got to pay this person. I got to pay this person. And all it is now is us consuming things. It's not us taking time, like you said, day to day, thinking about who we are and what do we actually want. And now this COVID-19 has put people in that place where you really have to sit down and be around your family and think about who you are. When you should have been doing this every day regardless, <laughs> okay? Exactly. And that's the blessed part about this now is people have a time to reflect and to sit down. And that's what we make our students do is reflect on who you really want to be. Stop thinking about the outside world. Stop thinking about, you know, you may have this vision of a, a celebrity. I tell the kids that you want to be like, okay, great. Go watch their bio. Go do the research see how long it took them to really get to where they want to go. Then you'll be able to respect more the journey it's going to take you to get to that person's level. And so now it's not looking at them as an idol, but more looking at them as a, uh, a, a, a replication to say, this is where I could, if I do X, Y, and Z, I can replicate their model. It's like Jay-Z said, don't be me, do what I do for you, basically. And so that's what we're trying to teach our kids. Stop looking at these artists or stop looking at these poets and other people and trying to compare yourself to them and think of who you are and build that because you only are you once and you only could be right. you. And again, yeah. once you master your universe, imagine what you can create. And there's no one else like you. So, you know, it's like always, um, you know, value who you are and who your child is created to be and as individuals we come together collectively to do a lot of good right but if you aren't even sure in what's happening with you and your thought process and how you're feeling about you know whether you're confident or not with what you're doing then it does directly impact your children and the children around you right because they're like well you don't seem too sure in what you're doing and what you're saying. So how can I really tie myself to that and trust that it's okay? And, you know, children are amazing and amazingly resilient. They have an amazing bond of trust, but we have to teach them how to be fortified. And I, and I appreciate that that's what you're doing. And so, you know, again, we can do this. We're doing it, managing every day one day at a time, one person at a time, one family at a time, one community at a time, we can see major changes. Uh, thank you for watching Managing Day to Day with me and National Parents Unit and my wonderful guest, Josiah. Josiah, go ahead and say a closing word and tell the people how they can find you. And first off, shout out to Christina and the National Parents Union. Um, I thank you for all you're doing. East Coast, big up. West Coast, big up. I see y'all. Haiti, I love you. Facebook, y'all blowing up. I see you. Instagram, everybody, follow us the same way. It's all music changing lives. Music changing lives. Just how it's spelled. Uh, musicchanginglives.org. Say it again and again and again. Music changing lives. Because that's what we do one note at a time. Uh, we change lives one note at a time through music and art now. And we look forward to working with you guys across the globe. We're now, we now have virtual programs for you. So again, find us at musicchangingLives.org and get involved. Peace. Thank you so much, my brother. You have a wonderful day. Love you. Bye, everyone. Peace. We hope that you're well. We'll see you again here at the same time tomorrow on Managing Day to Day with me and National Parents Union. Goodbye, my beautiful children. I'll see you tomorrow. All set. Okay. <laughs>